that is a nice, beautiful silver dollar there from 19, 1921. And I was lucky enough to metal detecting to be able to uh, dig that out of the ground. One of my greatest finds. But today, everybody, we're going to be talking about why silver and gold have well have been such a great uh, investment over the years. I'm going to prove to you the purchasing power that they have maintained because, as you know, they're creeping up, 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 and you need to know that there is a historical reason for that. In uh, we're going to tear into that right now. And welcome in everybody to I hope what is going to be a very revealing discussion for you today. Gold and silver, precious metals in general, and I've uh, I've get fielded so many questions over the last year. But I've been involved in in uh, writing projects and trying to get the rancho here, the urban homestead, going well. And it's been been very challenging times because, well, to be frank, for a couple of years I let stuff go around here and I've paid a heavy price for it. But now it is time to turn my attention to many of the questions that have come in over the last year, some of which have to deal with uh, economics. And people remind me that for years I've been flogging gold and silver as uh, not so much as an investment because I'm trying to change people's thinking, but I'm trying to get people to think about gold and silver and precious metals in terms of maintaining purchasing power. Now in a separate video I'm going to talk about the whys and wherefores of why silver and gold are, are going up. So it's a good opportunity for you to, to uh, hit that subscribe button and the bell for all notifications so you don't miss anything coming up because well you're not going to hear you you see a lot of videos about silver and gold talking about the price blah 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 but they don't tear into the realities of why well historically it's been but well of course it has right history is very important 5,000 years of always going for the gold when times get tough why because people understand it has it has it has value and uh, it's real and it's tangible and it's a very useful metal but it has a lot of panache of history associated with it too psychology of, of gold as we call it and the fact that it's grabbed for monetary systems and things like that. you have to have something if you're going to have a real monetary system not that paper monstrosity that we have here so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications let's go and do a deep dive on this now the first thing you have to realize is the price of silver and gold don't change okay imagine that you took a nail and took an ounce of gold and nailed it to the wall please don't do this stuff and an ounce of silver and nailed it to the wall okay and said to your friends how's that look like that's moving they'll be like that's just not moving at all that thing's there it's stuck in place well that's really what gold and silver are they're not moving well how can that be i see the price has gone from five hundred dollars to twenty five hundred dollars in uh, 20 years come on Think about it this way. It's everything else that's moving in relation to that stuck to the wall. We've gone through this huge inflation uh, post-pandemic. We walk into a grocery store, go to a McDonald's, a family of four, uh, $80, $80 to eat, go to rest, $20 or $20 burgers, uh, fees for service staff. And I mean, it's crazy land out there. You get meal delivered, a Big Mac and a fish, a fish fillet, $30 delivered. Really? Gasoline prices, home prices, don't even get me started on rent. All those have gone up, up, up. Okay. So really what that means is the purchasing power of the dollar has gone down, down, down. And not just the United States dollar relative to silver and gold, but currencies worldwide relative to the price of gold. So it's everything else that's floating in relation to that ounce of silver and gold that are nailed to that wall. So actually what's happening is your purchasing power is diminishing radically at this point in time. But I don't have to tell you that because you already know it. So let's tear into an example here, two examples that will show you the power of silver and gold. And I'm not going to be one of those people that talks about, oh, invest in silver and gold because they're great things. Look at the chart. We have a breakout here, head and shoulders pattern, inverse cup, all this crazy stuff. 
I'm going to look at it from a perspective that you've never thought about before in terms of history and real purchasing power. And all I have to do is prove to you that over the last approximately 100 years, the purchasing power of silver has been maintained and the purchasing power of gold has been far even outperform that relative to anything else, real estate, anything else in the world today. Because you'll hear a lot of people say, oh, gold doesn't kick off any, uh, you know, it doesn't produce a dividend, it's blah, blah, blah. Uh, it doesn't have any uh, real value. They'll, they'll, find a, they'll find a dozen ways to disparage it. But you and I both know that there's something special about precious metals, hence they call them precious. Precious. They're not going to throw out that title and just call them metals in the future. They're always going to be known as precious metals. And that's drilled into people's mind over 5,000 years. And that is very, very important. Now, an ounce of gold today, we're going to do 29, excuse me, an ounce of silver today is $29 an ounce. Meaning if you went, we're going to pay a little markup if you go into a, uh, you know, a new coin deal or a shop to buy uh, some silver. You're going to pay a little bit over the spot price for that. But I need to prove to you that the purchasing power has been maintained. Now, back in 1929, a gallon of gasoline cost 21 cents a gallon, the average in America. 21 cents a gallon. I could basically take two silver dimes, vintage, uh, vintage 1929, go to a gas station, Right. And uh, well, I could get uh, I could get basically a gallon of gasoline here. Well, today we know the average price of a gasoline uh, of a gallon of gasoline in America is three dollars and 40 cents across the United States. Now, I would have to take uh, what, 34 of our so-called copper, copper nickel dimes uh, today to the uh to get a gallon of gas but suppose that i kept those two dimes from 1929 i kept them in a drawer and i took them out today and i took them to a coin dealer and i said you know what i want to cash these in for some uh for some uh currency right you take them in at the value today and uh, unbelievably Today, a, a, a ounce of th those two silver dimes have have two dollars and fourteen cents worth of silver in each of them. In other words, the dealer is going to give you somewhere around four dollars in currency for four one dollar bills, give or take a little bit. For those two silver dimes, you have. Now you can take that four dollars, go buy a gallon of gasoline. You're going to have sixty cents left over. In other words, the purchasing power of silver has been perfectly maintained over time. It's buying power. Okay, you can do this against bread. You can do this against anything, right? In fact, it's overcompensated in purchasing power by giving you change back. For, for your uh, for your currency, when you take those two dimes, you're going to get over a gallon of gas today. Not too bad. Therefore, your purchasing power has not suffered over time. Unlike uh, a dollar bill from 1929, might be worth about 15 cents in today's uh, in today's purchasing power. It's much the same in gold too. Now, stick with me, okay? I'm not I'm not Mr. Wizard of Mathematics here, but even I can figure this out. Back in 1929, it took 20 kilograms of gold to purchase the average home in America cost $12,860 in 1929 or 643 ounces of gold at $20 uh, at $20 an ounce that's remember you can change a $20 gold certificate for a $20 gold piece okay that's the way that that worked later they put the price up to 32 and did some other things but I want to show you today the average home price has gone from $12,860 in 1929 to $412,000 
today. Okay, but if you had those 643 ounces of gold that you still held from 1929, that gold would be worth $1.6 million today, or four times the value of uh, a uh, uh, four times the value of the average home today. Which means that although a house has become 32 times more valuable since 1929, gold has become 125 times more valuable, thus proving that it perfectly maintains your purchasing power, which I think is pretty amazing. Thus, when people say buy gold and silver because of this and that, I say buy gold and silver because they maintain purchasing power. Yes, sometimes you might have ferocious dips, but other times there's a reason that things are going up. And they always end up overcompensating or at least compensating over the long run and putting real purchasing power in your hands. You like that? Well, I sure do, because I love the economics behind it, and it works. I hope you've enjoyed this. In a future video, we're going to be talking about the whys it looks like it's apparently going up so, so fast, while everything else is, in reality, purchasing power going down. That's going to be an interesting discussion in itself. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications, okay? And... I'll take your comments in the comment section down below. I'd like to hear, love to hear from you. And your comments, if you found this enlightening, if you want to pound me or whatever and tell me how great this or that is. Well, <laughs> no ounce of gold ever came at me for, uh, uh, you know, a high, current, high condo reserve fund uh, dinging you for 200,000 special assessments. <laughs> it just sits there nailed to the wall. Just looking nice there. Okay, so once again, like and subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment down below. And thanks so much for being part of the discussion today. Thumbs up are appreciated.